What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Variant the Podcast. I'm Eris Quinones with Tim Conley, and today we're going to talk some Comic-Con at home news again, because now it is officially over. It's over, and not much happened. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, to that point, let's just get into it. That is very, very true. I feel like not much happened as well. We There was tons of panels. I mean, if you were to go to, or if you do go to the San Diego Comic-Con YouTube page, uh, they have tons of panels. They were uploading, I feel like, almost every hour from Wednesday to Sunday. So they have tons of panels up. But with that said, like I feel like there was nothing of real importance as far as for the comic book community, which is what, you know, we cover here. Uh, they did have some panels, like they had some DC panels, they had some Marvel panels, uh, you know. But, like, I think I was telling you over text the other day, the the DC panel uh, I watch, it's cool and all, you know, some of my favorite creators are on there. Tom King talked about his uh, his Rorschach comic book. Uh, Tom Taylor talked about his uh, Deceased and Suicide Squad run. But it was basically just that. It was more like the moderator would just be like, hey, who are you and what are you doing? And then, the you know, the writer or artist would be like, I'm working on this and this. And then they would just do it all the way around and that's it. They wouldn't really get into, like, story arcs character development you know what what's going into each event or story it was very much just like i'm tom taylor and i'm writing uh deceased unkillables you know what i mean the end mm-hmm. well, it's, which you know it's cool to see him tom taylor's a really nice guy uh you know tom king seems like a really nice dude so it's cool to see them and all but as far as information goes i don't feel like we got much of any as you know over this comic-con at home yep as a whole yeah i think man i'll tell you we, we talked about it uh you know last week and it just the whole Comic-Con at home thing, it kind of had a vibe for me right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Not that it was going to be lame per se, but that it was just going to be overall relatively uneventful. Right. Because as we said before, so much about Comic-Con is about the community experience. And there's just certain things that go on at Comic-Con, even even in the panels or a lot of the breakout sessions um, that you just can't replicate online. You just cannot replicate it. Right. And I think that even the companies that were involved, um, you know, like DC, who we know has the fandom event coming up uh, later in August. I just, I think they also kind of knew that going in. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't put a lot of money or time or effort. For sure. And to, to be clear, to be clear and fair, uh, coronavirus and the pandemic situation obviously has been a major hindrance to companies across the board and doing anything on a large scale. But I just, it didn't feel like it was just that. It felt like they intentionally just roped back, didn't put as much into it, whether that be because they're going to do a lot more in their own events or because they knew that you're just not going to hit as many people. It's not going to be as effective. It's not going to be as broad a scale in terms of what they're trying to accomplish in revealing things and, you know, making their pitches to their audiences and so forth. Uh, then they're able to do in these massive, you know, fanfare events like Comic-Con, you know, San Diego Comic-Con, especially good Lord. It's just a, it's a beast, a behemoth of an event as we all know. For sure. Yeah. And you know, to your point, you know, especially on DC's front, like that does make sense that they didn't, you know, give too much new information as far as what they're doing with comics tv shows movies and stuff like that because we do know dc fandom is coming up uh towards the end of august Mm -hmm. and that's where all their big reveals are going to be made so it makes sense on dc's front where they were just like you know this is the books we have coming out here you go but again as a whole because i was talking as as a broad i was just using dc as an example it's you know it's a little weird for for other publishers you know especially like marvel and stuff like that where you know correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think there's anything set up in the pipeline for marvel to make big comic announcements or any of these other publishers it seems like they're just gonna kind of do it the way they've been doing it you know online on websites and and whatnot and kind of roll with the punches and not use uh san diego as their platform this year yeah and i want i really am interested to see how that's going to play out in the end because Mm -hmm. disney didn't have almost any presence in this at all um disney i think more than anyone any other studio or or any other publisher disney really has roped back i mean we we've talked about it privately just even marvel it just they've got some comic books coming out but it just feels very light you know what i'm saying yeah, like, yeah, yeah everything just feels really light and just disney as a whole they seem to be kind of content outside of reopening their parks they seem kind of content just pushing everything way out 
and getting as far away from this whole thing as possible. Um, mm. There doesn't seem to be, and again, that's just totally speculative. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but it doesn't seem like there's as much of an urgency as you see with like, you know, Warner Brothers where they just, you know, Tenet, how many times they've they've pushed Tenet back by like two weeks. And then more recently they postponed it indefinitely, but now they're talking about releasing a new release date sometime in late August. You know, and who knows what's going to happen ultimately, but you know, you can, you can tell there's more of an urgency with like Warner Brothers and Universal mm-hmm. and some of these other studios to like try and get these films out, um, i.e. like Wonder Woman being rescheduled just to uh, the beginning of October instead of like late at the end of the year or the beginning of next. So it's really interesting for me to see how this is going to continue because we, you know, Disney pretty much canceled all their major plans in terms of uh, their cons. Like, the, you know, they had the Star Wars celebration that got canceled entirely. You had, you know, their D23 event. I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know. If, was that supposed to be this year or next year? I think it was next year, but I, but I'm not 100 percent, you know, confident yeah. in that answer. <laughs> I know that they did it last year and I, I can't remember if they were going to do it again this year. I know I, I believe it's every two years. Yeah, it's every other year. So then it would be next year. So that worked in their favor. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, with Comic-Con, uh, all, every Comic-Con really for the entire year effectively canceled minus I think C2E2 was the only one that got off with a bang as far as like the bigger cons right and they were that's because it was right like literally a week after that convention right. things started you know right. going crazy in the in the world yeah it was right at the beginning of all of the crazy uh but you know everything else got canceled so marvel has really had no platform whether that be you know marvel studios or marvel comics mm-hmm. and publishing they've really had no platform to you know roll anything out and they're supposed to have some you know big things hit later this year on disney plus as far as like exactly winter soldier right. and falcon and you know wandavision mm-hmm. and all that stuff and all this is obviously you know because the thing with with marvel and or mc the mcu to be specific is they're super strategic right like everything is placed and you know released at that time for a certain reason because it's a it's a broader universe that all connects Mm -hmm. so the thing that's crazy with that is you know you move one you have to move all of them pretty much especially because you don't want them too close to each other or this is going to you know conflict with this or you can't put you know this series out before the movie because then it won't make sense so it's it's kind of just like a mess right (laughs) so i'm very curious to see you know what happens because black widow is obviously delayed right now Mm -hmm. um that's a prequel but they do say the ending is kind of gonna tie to some stuff that you know is gonna matter in present mcu uh the present mcu timeline so i don't know man it's just nuts that we were supposed to be so into like wonder woman months ago black widow months ago yeah. and now it, now it's just yeah. it's this weird like warp like what day is it like I, I make the joke to my wife all the time where it's like i'm living like groundhog's day you know what i mean because it's like <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. this it's everything's just become like one long day you just pause to you know sleep and then that's it because nothing changes right like you know we're not like going to the stores like normal or going out on weekends and stuff you know the world is kind of on pause still and it's it's kind of depressing i'm gonna be honest <laughs> i'm not trying to like bring this down but it's like i think everyone would agree we want things to get back to normal so yeah and what's you know crazy about that too is all this entertainment the stuff we look forward to is kind of what is helping us get by right so but we're kind of dwindling we're kind of running out because they're not really making new stuff so there's mm-hmm. going to come a point especially with live action stuff where that's going to be done they can still continue like animation and video games and comics because that could all be done remotely but you can't you know make a movie like wonder woman remotely that's literally impossible so I, I'm just so curious to see what 2021 is going to have in store for us because yeah. this basically pausing and taking this year off is going to mess up the next several years for sure. Now, with that said, glass half full, that doesn't mean everything everything's going to go to crap and we're not going to get cool stuff. It just means things are going to be shuffled around like crazy and there's going to be lots of, yeah, I know we said that, but we have to move it because of this and don't worry, you'll get it in another month, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, what a weird world we're in. Yeah. Everybody is essentially, this is, this is unprecedented waters for absolutely everyone and you know at this point not all the world is on the same footing Mm -hmm. even here in the united states you have some areas of the country that are behaving as normal and you have other areas of the country that are you know dealing with you know much more heavy and they're talking about lockdowns again and all this kind of stuff so in in, and around the world it's a totally different animal right you have some countries that are just they're just going about their business Mm -hmm. and you have others that are, are, are seeing resurgences so you have like just all this crazy going on everywhere And as a result, you have companies 
you know, these movie studios, these are all international corporations now. You know, they depend on their overseas uh, markets and all this kind of thing. Same thing with video games and all this kind of stuff. Um, And everybody's just trying to figure out, and man, what a weird world. Um, And I I can tell you from, you know, sitting in some of these meetings and things like that, that the conversations that are being had now on the business side of things, um, I I have never heard before. Everyone that I know has never heard them before or had them before. It's just a really, really freaking weird time. Uh, and everybody's just trying to figure it out. And so with Di- like with Disney, like what you were talking about with Disney and, and even just the, the MCU shows that were supposed to come to Disney Plus, all of that has been now pushed back so dramatically that everything is just indefinite now. They're not, they're not saying any dates. They're not, they just don't know. They're trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to release this and in what order? Because yeah. some of these shows were partially recorded or filmed rather, and some of them were just in pre-production. So it's like, there's this weird, they're in this, very strange limbo uh, just waiting to get back to some sense of production and normalcy so that they can start really laying out a slate for themselves because they Mm -hmm. clearly don't feel like they can do that successfully now which is obviously totally understandable, like completely crazy. And that's just talking about movies. Comics is dealing with uh, similar issues, right. but you know, they're, they've gotten back to somewhat of a regimen and it's easier because, you know, comic book creators and, and even the editors, you can work remotely. I mean, that's what they do it under normal circumstances. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, you right. don't have people in cubicles, you know, at Marvel headquarters mm-hmm. in New York anymore. Everyone's working from all around the world because that's what email is for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. It's like, what's all this technology for if not to get these things cleared out? All right, 100%. But, but at the same time, it kind of does make, it, that was one of the big reasons why I questioned why we had such a delay. You know, why why comics took such a long break. Well, it was a distribution. It was a distribution that got shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. The distribution was the problem. Yeah. Obviously, uh, that was the, that was the biggest issue. Um, but even after, like you would have thought that during that time period that the publishers, namely Marvel, I'm really kind of talking about Marvel because DC was really working their butts off yeah, to get things were. back going. But Marvel specifically, like you would have thought, man, with that long break and everybody just continue, they could have just continued to work as they've been for the most part. Mm -hmm. Uh, you would have thought there would have just been a litany of books waiting to go out the second distribution started reopening. And that was not the case. No, they went to a bi-weekly release. Uh, and then they also canceled a ton of books and even their big event book right now, empire, which we've been covering on uh, our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Uh, they cut down a bunch of, uh, spinoffs for that in tie-ins. So, you know, it, it's it's really interesting times to see how they're approaching it. Now, a lot of people, they'll be like, well, that's because they got that Disney money. They don't need to care as much <laughs> as mm-hmm. DC does where, you know, you know, DC, though owned by Warner Brother, it seems very evident that like DC is still like its own kind of thing, if that makes mm-hmm. any sense. You know what I mean? Where Marvel Comics seems a lot more in synergy with Disney and Marvel Studios, you know what I right, mean? Right. So that, you know, there there seemed like a better amalgamation of like everything mixed together where DC, again, is kind of its own thing, even though it's not. But that's kind of interesting, though. And I, I, we've talked about that before. How I like how I think it I think it was cool how DC kind of led the charge to bring print books back just Agreed. because I think I think it says something to like the effect of, you know, whether you like Marvel or DC more doesn't matter. DC was around before Marvel Comics. So, you know, Superman, like the first American superhero and all that stuff, you know, these are the guys. Without without DC Comics and, you know, the trinity of DC, Marvel Comics wouldn't exist, at least almost certainly not in the way they do today. So right. I think it was cool to see them, you know, still in the modern era in 2020, lead the charge for the comic book industry. You know what I mean? So I thought I that agree. was kind of, I thought that was really cool to be like, yeah, you know, we're still, you know, DC Comics. We're still kind of the guys who, you know, invented this medium in a sense and we're going to, you know, do what we can to keep this alive. I I just kind of, you know, I'm a big buff with the continuity and history of comics Mm -hmm. so it's cool to see even you know like all these decades later dc comics still kind of you know trying to lead the charge and make everyone uh follow in their in their footsteps yeah at the bare minimum it felt fitting right yeah yeah it was kind of it kind of reminded me like in my brain i'm watching like one of those uh like documentaries on like the golden age or like you know those documentaries you'll see with like neil adams and denny's going all like the og guy stan lee i'm like it kind of felt like that like when we're in 2040 this will obviously be part of the new documentary entries that are coming out then and you you will have to say dc comics was you know the the first uh guys especially out of the big two to bring it back you know to production in a print format so 
You know, it's it's they'll, they've definitely made their mark in history because obviously 2020 is going to live in infamy <laughs> forever. <laughs> and so when referred to, you could at least say on the comic book front that DC was like the ones kind of really pushing to get books back in on uh, comic book store shelves. And I can tell you, you know, we speak on behalf of, I think, <laughs> all of comic fandom. Uh, we are all very grateful for that because if it wasn't for DC uh, really working their tails off, DC editors and, and you know, just everybody over there, all the creators, writers, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we would have really been without content. Oh, uh, for sure. Our, the, the, the comic book world would have been really bare over the last mm-hmm. few months. Uh, because like we said, you know, the independent side, they've had some stuff coming out, but that's been, you know, minimal as well. Uh, and, but most, you know, most importantly, Marvel has just been very sporadic, uh, in mm-hmm. their releases. And, and to that end, because of what we're saying, it does, for me, it does speak to, is that a financial decision? Were they looking at things and yeah. saying, this is not going to be profitable, and we're, we're not going to expend the capital because we don't think that this is going to be a good situation for a little while. So we're going to minimize and cut back because that's the only thing that makes sense. For sure. And it's like one of those things, too, where it's like, I wonder if like almost out of necessity, D.C., had to get their books back out and stuff like that because they right. don't have Papa Disney in their corner That's with those, exactly you right know, the, those pockets, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it could be that. But either way, it doesn't really matter the reason. The point is, you know, they were the ones kind of hustling to get everything back. And I, I know people are probably listening like, you're just DC fanboying. It's like, no, that's, li- you know, I'm. if Marvel did this, we'd be saying the same exact thing. That Absolutely, is literally yep. just how it went down. And it's not a matter of, you know, Marvel being better than DC or vice versa. It's right. a matter of DC was really the ones gunning to get their stories into people's hands again. So, yep. you know, Marvel now obviously Marvel's still putting out books again like that, but oh, they yeah. they're uh they're still not doing the quantity DC is doing, which I wonder like you said is that strategic or are they in a restructuring stage as well trying to see like where they need to go? Maybe, you know, there's some stuff we certainly don't know behind the scenes that's going on. So, I'm very curious to see what by the end of Empire because going into the you know the next big event or see where we end at that where the new continuity or where things are left rather after this because this is a pretty big event book I mean you got the Avengers you got the Scroll you got the Katadi you got the Kree so definitely mm-hmm. things are going to be mixed up for sure uh, once this uh, event ends yeah no doubt about it but kind of to that point and and to speak to a little bit of I guess to emphasize the point that we're making about Marvel versus DC is even with their big event they had to rope back some of their right. books and cut some yeah. of the cut the breakout books and the tie-ins. So, you know, that it's they're they've got stuff going on, but it's just nowhere near at the volume that DC came roaring back with. Mm-hmm. But, but what's crazy though too is, you know, to go on the other side, Marvel's been pumping out some, you know, the books they have been pumping out, they have several of the hottest books That's on true. the market right now. This is like, very true. Because they have Donny Cates in their corner. He is like, you know, one of the hottest writers in all comics right now with his Venom run. And then his Thor run, obviously, is freaking ridiculous. So those two titles alone, those are like, you know, they pretty much make top 10 sales every month. So yes. they do have lot, some good stuff going out. It's just mm-hmm. not nearly as much as they used to. But yes. I guess they're doing quality over uh, quantity <laughs> right now. And <laughs> that, I got that, that's your that's your glass half full mentality. That's my glass right half there. full. But so I will say that. to kind of spin off that, like I know you've been enjoying it with me. Uh, Donny Kate's Thor run has yes, been great. Man. It's been so, so much fun. Uh, he's like one of those, I kind of compare him to Snyder in the sense where he's one of those dudes who does something that I would like to do if given the chance to write these characters, where he goes Mm -hmm. back to like Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, Ditko days and continuity, just old continuity, and he finds something. And then he'll ask his editor, he'll be like, hey, did they ever explain this? And then the editor will be like, no. He goes, huh, could I do it? And they're like, yeah. And then he'll go back, (laughs) (laughs) he'll do it and make it, you know, make it to where like there was this character or thing or object that were just piece of continuity that was there all these years. We just didn't know. Like the symbiote god Null, like we were thought it was a planet all these years. It's not a planet. It's actually a hive. And at the core of that, like Null was trapped in there. That was his prison. And he's the symbiote god. Just all this kind of, he keeps doing that and introduces like Codex and stuff into the Venom com- yeah. continuity. Now he's good, apparently doing stuff with uh, Galactus and the Black Winter and Thor. I'm yeah, like, man. it's so brilliant. What he's doing with the Black Winter is dope. It's it's just so brilliant. Like it makes all the sense of the world. And I compare him to Snyder because mm-hmm. Snyder basically did that with the Court of Owls, right? The what what yep. makes the Court of Owls so cool is they're a new villain, but they're not, 
right? Correct. Like the whole exactly thing with right. them is there was there with a secret society that if you actually go back and read old Batman comic books, you'll see like owls on buildings and markings. And Snyder found this in old, you know, Batman books was like, hey, I see like a kind of a pattern here. I wonder why this is here. It's never really been explained. So he decides to be like, well, you know what? Those owls are the symbol of the Court of Owls. <laughs> this is a secret <laughs> society that actually runs all of Gotham and went with that. So I love that you know when writers do that i think that's how you make some of the best villains to be like they were always here you know yes. and it just because it, it it naturally embeds it to the mythos and it makes it feel like again they were there just no one decided to talk about them like as if they were like a d-list uh, villain or character you know yeah i think you're right on the money in comparing him uh to snyder uh because he definitely has he has that vibe to him uh right. in that in that charm to the stories that he writes with these characters, because there, there is a lot to be said for a writer that can honor the past and great stories and writers uh, that came before you and to build on what they've done in really right. smart, creative ways. Um, yep. That that's, that is the, one of the hallmarks of a good writer, especially a good comic book writer. And sure. he does such a good job. I know he got himself into some trouble more recently. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, as far as, as, a, as a comic book writer, I mean, he really does have a really smart, creative sense of not just what would be fun for these characters, but what the audience would enjoy. You know, there's a difference between just telling a story that you like and writing a story with an understanding of and thinking about what your audience is going to enjoy. He, for me, it seems very much like he has a really strong sense of not just what would be fun with these characters inside these universes, but what the audience would find entertaining. I agree with that 100% because, you know, one of, another reason why I like him so much is you could tell he's just such a big fan. Like, he's like yeah. the little kid who's like, you know what would be awesome yeah. if we did this? <laughs> <laughs> and it's something like, you know, so crazy. It's like, yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it would be really cool if uh, we made a, a cosmic Ghost Rider. Because that's another thing. He's responsible for just so many of the new Marvel characters that have become breakout titles yes. or hits. Yep. So he's mm -hmm. just like one after another. And he has that good imagination where it's just like us like just literally like me and you talking at lunch being like you know it'd be really dope if they gave like <laughs> they gave like batman battle axes and made him like some medieval knight because they do call him the dark knight so let's really make him a knight and you know he'll just take ideas yeah. like that and really do them and you're like yeah why didn't they do that you know what i mean what's funny <laughs> is and, and kind of this listen to you with what we're talking about but kate's uh you know we've actually been in the room and we've we've been in the room around uh snyder and capullo why they're talking mm -hmm. to each other Yep. And they legitimately just sit there and go, oh, you know, it'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like they do that for real. <laughs> and that very much feels like what Kate's does as well. Like you're saying, it's, it's, it's actually, it makes it a lot of fun. For sure. I think we could say it now because the book has been out for a while, but uh, way back when, before Metal came out, we were interviewing yep. uh, Snyder and Capullo and we were at the, mm -hmm. it was New York Comic Con. We were yep. at their, uh, the DC press booth, you know, with the other press waiting to do our interview. And as we're, you know, uh, you're getting the camera ready, you know, I'm putting the mic on and all that stuff. Uh, we hear that Snyder is trying to convince, because this is before Metal. This is this That's is right. like almost six months to a year before Metal. And I, Snyder's telling Capullo, he's like, hey, so like I got this idea for like this character book. You know, it's going to involve all the characters. You, you're going to get to draw like, you know, uh, Hal Jordan, all the Justice League. And Capullo's like, dude, I am too old to be drawing all those characters, man. He's like, I don't want to draw these. He's <laughs> like, trust me, this is going to be really fun. It's going to change the DC universe. Yeah. And they were just going back and forth. Come yep. to find, and I, and at that time, I'm like, oh, they're totally doing a Justice League book, which yep. kind of, but we find out like a few months later when they announced Metal. And I'm like, that's the metal. book. That's what they were talking about. They were talking yep. about Metal. So I was like, that's so funny. <laughs> I remember we spent the, like the next couple of days, you remember, trying to figure out like, what could it be? Right. It has to yeah. be Justice League. Because yep. we were sitting there and Capullo is like, ah, you know, no. Because this is when they were getting ready to be done with their Batman run. Yeah, he's like, I'm too old to be drawing all these yeah, characters he's just every like, month. like, come yeah. on, man. And, 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 and <laughs> Scott's like, Scott's going, Scott's going, no, 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 man. It's going to be totally awesome. You don't even know. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. So it was really interesting and fun, but it, it very much that's the the spirit of this guys, and that's what Kate comes off as. Like he's oh, for that sure. guy. No, yeah, you even see him in like interviews and stuff like that. Like apparently, because we know right now they're doing um in the Venom arc, they're doing uh what is it? Venom Beyond is the current story arc they're in, which is setting up Virus and all that stuff, and the the coming of Null. But 
apparently all the way from issue one, like introducing Null, all the way to the King in Black, which is going to be the culmination of everything coming in December when Null finally arrives on Earth. Right. Uh, he had all that beginning, middle, and end, like all three acts laid out, and he pitched it to Stegman. So it's still unfolding, which is crazy because this guy had a freaking like, what has he been on Venom for two years now or something like that? I think like 2018. Mm -hmm. So he planned all this out, and obviously with Marvel and the editors knew that like, look, it's going to start with Venom. We're probably going to cross in over a little bit in Thor, so I need to do my own little Thor book, and I want to do some things there. And then, you know, it's all ultimately going to kind of collide at least for venom in that you know part of the universe uh in king and black so i'm like this is it's just so fascinating to you know see like the storytelling and just like they literally get to nerd out <laughs> you know what i mean they, right, get, yeah. they get the toys to the kingdom and they're basically like oh it'd be cool if we do this with venom and there's this is god and like now he's trying to kill eddie brock what if eddie brock loses his hand and now the venom symbiote has to give him a hand like just all these cool things i'm like really ah, fun it's the dream job <laughs> no joke I'll be, I'm me personally. I'm really curious to see if anything that he's doing in these books are going to cross over into empire at all. Well, we do know from the cover of King in black that the, the uh, banner Hulk is in there and we know in empire, That's true. That's we know in true. empire that, um, she Hulk is, but spoiler alert, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler for, I believe issue one of empire, uh, she Hulk actually becomes like kind of the original she hulk in the sense where right. she's able to talk normally again she's not like hulk smash she's given this hammer by uh swordsman mm -hmm. and now she's like the old jennifer she hulk uh she still looks you know a little more bulkier than she used to but she's talking yeah. normal again so i'm wondering she's like it's me yeah she's like it's me i felt i feel <laughs> awesome but i'm wondering if this is them slowly setting things up to slowly revert things back by the end of this event where we have like the og hulk and you know Obviously, we, he's going to be in King and Black, and Empire will be done by then. So I'm wondering Wouldn't that if, be something after I just got done whining for 30 straight minutes on yeah. the last podcast about this? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's as I always say, in the world of comic books, it's only going to take a year or two for things to revert yeah. back to the status quo. <laughs> Either that or they've been listening to the podcast and they know yeah. how I feel about it. You know what I mean? I have a lot of sway in the comic. They're like, that's Tim. We're going we're gonna to do it. We, he really likes yeah, the Yeah, you know, we're upsetting Tim. We can't let this go on. <laughs> We gotta fix this problem, gang. But uh, we did. We kind of we kind of went off tangent from our Comic Con at home thing. I mean, for good reason. This was we fun. did. But this we was. I, I can say this. That what we've been talking about is way more entertaining than most of the things that went on at Comic Con at home. <laughs> oh, burn! Oh, that was wow. That was in poor taste. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Fine. Fine. It wasn't as entertaining as we did. We'll say that. <laughs> what I do want to bring up next, though, which I thought was extremely interesting, is we did get. Uh, a, you know, an important panel this past Saturday with Zack Snyder, but mm -hmm. it wasn't but not a Comic Con at home. It was yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't San Diego Comic Con. I was so Very perplexed funny. by this. It was at uh, something called Justice Con, which, mm -hmm. uh, to be quite frank, I'm not too familiar with. Uh, I don't know who runs it or anything, but apparently it's just you know a, a small group of people who put together a con. I don't know if it's it was ever a physical con or a virtual con. Again. I've never heard of it before then, but uh, point is they got Zack Snyder on it to talk about the Snyder Cut and even release a very, very short clip. Now, with that said, obviously he's holding all the big reveals and teasers yeah. and trailers for DC fandom. That's where he confirmed in this in this panel uh, uh, at Justice Con that we're going to get a teaser at fandom. We are going to know whether the, his cut is going to be a series or just a really long movie as well as some uh, character reveals and other fun surprises. So if you're looking for all the good stuff, that's going to be at DC fandom, but he did show yes. a very small clip uh, during justice con, which I An will say emphasis, emphasis on very <laughs> small. This was yes. the shortest clip reveal <laughs> in the history of clip reveals. When, when I saw it, I was like, wait, is that, is that it? Was that an accident? Did you hit the stop button on accident? <laughs> It borderline wasn't even a clip. Well, what's funny to me is it wasn't even a new clip. This was a deleted scene that was right. has been released online for a while now. The only thing different from it is Snyder this whole time wanted Superman to have the black costume in the Justice exactly. League movie. But Warner Brothers or, you know, any of the higher ups he was dealing with, producers, what have you, were like, no, we just think that's going to work. We don't want Superman in the black suit for X, Y, Z reasons. So he, so Snyder and the costume designer was like, Fine, but he worked with the costume designer to make the suit so that in post it would be easy to change the color digitally. 
So <laughs> he literally got to the like n- without Warner Brothers and like all those higher ups knowing. He pulled the costume designer aside, like, "Look, I need you to make the suit in such a way that I could go back later if need be and change the color to black." So mm-hmm. that's what they did, and that's what this clip is. They it's the clip where Superman comes uh, to Alfred and he's like, "Hey, I'm assuming you're Alfred," and we just see him in the black suit. For the first time. Which does look dope. It does look dope. It does look dope. Now, I wasn't so hyped about this for two reasons. One, we've already seen this clip. Two, mm. it's the costume's just black now. And three, we kind of, not kind of, we did see the black costume in a dream sequence in Man of Steel. I don't know if you remember That's with right. Zod yep. and stuff. You saw it 20, 30 seconds. So I wasn't like, oh my God, it's something we've never seen before. I was just like, oh, that's cool. But it was nothing... But again, this yep. wasn't the big reveal, so they're no. saving that for fandom. So I guess something's better than nothing. But I, you know, you know all the diehard Snyder Cut people were like losing their mind, and I'm like, it's mm-hmm. cool and all, but <laughs> I'm not losing my mind yet. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, again, I guess every little thing, it's like, oh, okay, that's neat. But I mm-hmm. mean, just it was just like, why is this? I, just, I it was a letdown for me. I was just like, okay, who cares? <laughs> yeah, because again, we've seen it before. Right. We've seen images of him in the black suit. We've seen, I mean, we've seen it. So it was like, and it was literally not even joking. It's like four or five seconds long. Yeah, the panel itself, I think the panel, just hearing Snyder talk for like 40, 50 minutes was way more interesting because yeah. we got we got that, you know, bit, that little tidbit about how he got with a costume mm-hmm. designer. He basically, he. I love how like cheeky he is, so to, so to say, yeah. where like he gives things away without giving, with, he confirms things without confirming them. So like, right. you know, he was talking about Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern and all that stuff. So I'm like, are we going to get like, he's like pretty much kind of said without saying that we might see peaks of Green Lantern come DC fandom. At least that's what he what it was led to believe. Maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but I think we're going to get some cool stuff. I think we're either going to get a sneak peek of Green Lantern come fandom, Martian Manhunter come fandom, or the very first official voice clip of dark side i think that, that like fun. the teaser trailer ends and you just hear his voice and the red eyes just you know glowing in the background dude now that's that would something really i would get fun. hyped about that i would get hyped about yeah 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 i think <laughs> i think everybody will get a little bit giddy about that because we've gone this entire year essentially without any major reveals or fun new so Anything like that to come out about the the Snyder Cut, especially after the two years of trying to get this thing out uh, from all the fans, you know, it'll that will definitely be fun. And I I thought it was interesting too. Uh, he also revealed that he is doing this cut. He's working on this cut and doing it uh, for free. He's not getting paid. Did you see that? That is so crazy to me. Like, yes, that was one of the one of the nuts things. I was like, are you like? I, I was like, I borderline for a second. I'm like, I don't believe you. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, but but on the flip side of that, it kind of makes sense because this has literally become mm-hmm. like a movement. Like, it is such yeah. a passion because he. It seems like he's definitely just a man of principle at this point is like yeah i don't care i just want the world yep. to see what my vision was so more power to him man that that makes me respect him a whole lot more that he's he, it just shows that this is clearly just a passion and he wants the fans and all of us to see what he intended for the justice league for better or worse you know yeah and for me it wasn't even surprising to learn that information i i was like yeah that makes sense because i you know having produced uh you know actual short films and working in the film industry and and working with a lot of filmmakers um, you would be surprised how often filmmakers will make huge sacrifices for their work, um, where they take huge pay cuts or they just forego their pay entirely just to get it done or to get to squeeze a little bit more out of the budget so it can be right. And he's been so passionate about this and the possibility of getting his version of this film out to the public Mm -hmm. that when I saw it, it was more for me, the response was more like, that's about right. (laughs) That's not surprising because of how much money, you know, they're having to fork up to finish this thing. Right. So if they had to pay him on top of that, it would probably be prohibitive. So I'm sure he's not the only one. I bet you there's other people that are taking either imagine, uh, you know, large pay cuts uh, or even, you know, just volunteering to come in and just finish it out. Uh, just to get it done because again, these people spent years working Mm -hmm. on this project Uh, and they, you know, just as much as him, they would love to see their, their actual work uh, the way it was intended, you know, get out to the public and and put it in front of people so they can see their finished vision, at least, you know, with this particular film, again, we don't know what's going to happen if it's popular and, and, and they get to expand on it maybe. 
Uh, but man, I, I, it really does speak to no matter how you slice it. It kind of made me eat my words a little bit on some of the, you know, just thinking back to all the times where I was just like, man, okay, move on, give it a rest in regard to Zack Snyder. Cause he kept posting right. things out, you know, and me going, buddy, move on. You know, it's been years and he just kept at it. And you know, now it kind of makes me even feel bad yeah. <laughs> because as somebody as a producer and somebody who has produced content and has worked on passion projects, you know, it's like, I get it. And, and I understand. And, and I, I apologize, Zach, you know, I, that's, I, I feel you and I'm happy. I'm really happy for him uh, to be able to, to get his work out. Well, I am really happy for him too. You know what I think it is though? I, I would assume for, for both of us with that, I, it wasn't necessarily so much him as much as the internet noise, you know, Yes, for <laughs> sure. where people were just very not nice. <laughs> if you disagreed with them in the slightest about the Zack Snyder cut, you know what I mean? So I think it was, yeah. it, it was just like that. The, the internet's the funniest thing, right? Where it's like the best thing in the world, but it's also like the worst thing in the world. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like, I feel like there's no middle ground. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, you know, ultimately at some point it started feeding into like the, the tribalism that we're dealing with in our current climate mm -hmm. where everybody just jumps in and then it just becomes like the noise becomes like level 1000. Right. And it's, and it can be relentless. And that was really, you're hundred percent right. That was what was wearing on both of us. It was just like, okay, calm down. <laughs> I'll say one I'll say one thing though. He did hint to like he did say in that panel that he was very he likes uh the series idea. He said if it was up to him, it would be series format. Which all that told me was, because he didn't confirm what it was, but all that told me was it's going to be That's series the direction format. They're, yeah, it's they're going to announce that it's going to be like a four uh, four episode miniseries or something of that sort, which is as brilliant for me. <laughs> I'll take well, it. Yeah, that's when we were when we discussed it. When we discussed the possibilities here on the podcast, uh, we could, our conclusion at the end was that gives them the greatest potential to turn this into something beyond the the Snyder cut of Justice League. Mm -hmm. Is turning it into a series because they can make it the longest. A format possible that gives them the most leg room to really tell a long format story without it becoming, you know, burdensome in terms of its runtime. Right. Um, but also it leaves them a lot of leg room to where if this becomes popular, they can, you know, do something at the end that maybe leaves it open ended and ties into a next possible step. And wouldn't we love, as we said very clearly, <laughs> mm. wouldn't we love to see them make Darkseid the central figure, the dark entity, similar to what Marvel did with Thanos, uh, the central villain in the DC cinematic world, and for them to somehow tie in what they're doing with the Batman and, you know, these rumors about Michael Keaton coming back in to play oh, that would be amazing. Batman and have him play some kind of like a, a Nick Fury type role. I mean... There's so much potential there. And and again, there, nobody's saying this is going to happen. This has not even been rumored. This is just, for me especially, yeah. I, this is what I would like to see them do. Um, I think that would be the most fun. And I think it would be the most compelling for the fan base uh, for them to say, hey, we're creating like a multiverse here and we're going to tie these together in some epic, you know, uh, multi-story arc. No, that would that would be amazing. And he he did also say that this is like its own kind of continuity. He's He was very much referring to mm -hmm. like, he basically said without saying Elseworlds. You know what I mean? Yep. He said he was referring to graphic novels that artists just do their own takes, like Kingdom Come and things of that nature, Gotham by Gaslight. And all that means is elseworlds so so yep. like we talked about in the past we said this we're like what you know snyder if this is successful that you know they could just give snyder the reins to like you know just have his snyderverse have his own continuity go at it because we got rumors of ben affleck um potentially coming back for his own series for hbo max and all that stuff so you know if, right. it, if this is successful why not continue you know i'm you know i'm totally down for that i'm always down for more batman so <laughs> i would love to see something like that yeah and lord knows we need the entertainment so, right. <laughs> you know, we're starting to, we're starting to run shy. And in that vein, you know, with this, I, do we, do we don't have a set release date we, they just said next summer, right? Right. Yeah. Just 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have a set release date. Um, but depending on when this drops, uh, you know, this might be one of the bigger, you know, releases to come out. Oh, uh, for sure. During, right. Like when this for drops, sure. but because we don't know what movies are going to drop when, you know, going forward in the next few months. So if they can even get this done to where it drops maybe like early 2021, this might be one of the big draws 
uh, first draws of 2021. I mean, my anticipation, again, still is that we're going to get Wonder Woman before the year's out. We're going to get uh, Black Widow before the year's out. But there's not going to be a ton. They're Man. they're pushing a lot of things into 2021 already. It's true. I'm just, I'm just I want to see this cut so bad again. Like I just want for better or for worse. I just want to see it. I'm so so because we've we've said it all the time, but we've this never really happened before. We're basically going to have two versions of the same movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is crazy. Like what other movie is there two versions of the same exact thing? Especially on the scale of this. This is not like some oh, indie yeah. like 100 or even million dollar movie, right? This is right. like a massive franchise with a massive multi multi million dollar budget. Like with A-list it's actors. Insane. Right? So I am so this is this is definitely one to go down in history books just from a film perspective, right? Because again, like when has this oh, yeah. happened? You're literally getting a movie, the same movie from two different directors. Like that that, and, that is crazy. And if they do make it a series, you could argue this is probably going to be the highest quality seri- television series ever oh, right? in the history of, <laughs> right? of ever, right? <laughs> like a $300 million television series. Golly, he well Snyder was saying like he's he's very fond of the Game of Thrones uh mm-hmm. type style and the storytelling. So I'm like, oh again, like I said earlier, you're just basically saying without saying it's gonna be a series. <laughs> that's that's yeah. all you're really saying. That's yeah, all he's, you're saying. He's doing his little nods again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it for it. I love he was saying like how he'll like just drop bombs on social media and then go work out and not even look at the comments. <laughs> like, he's like, here's a picture of Martian Manhunter storyboard. Now I'm gonna go uh, lift some weights. <laughs> like <laughs> A man after my own heart. I was like, that is brilliant. Brilliant. That's brilliant, amazing. Brilliant. We'll see what plays out. But speaking of television shows, uh, we've got a couple of things here coming up. We actually speaking of, and also speaking of uh, needing more entertainment. I am excited to get Umbrella Academy. And then we've got the boys uh, coming up here. Dude, the boy. I love the Umbrella Academy, but the boys, I think yes. we said it last podcast that I was like, the boys is one of just my favorite TV shows in general. And it was such mm-hmm. a shock for me. Like it came out of nowhere in the sense like I obviously we knew it was coming out and I knew like it was a comic and all that stuff. But I'm like, I, for whatever reason, I just wasn't hyped for it. And then I watch it. I'm like, yeah. this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're getting this rumor of Jeffrey Dean Morgan possibly joining the cast for season three. Thomas it's Wayne? Even green-lighted. Yeah, Thomas <laughs> Wayne himself. Mr. Negan. Yeah. Dude, how many, how dude. many nerd franchises can that now. dude get on board? It's good for him. Good, good for him. For him. <laughs> he will have Comic Con. He will be a Comic Con legend. No, by, like royalty, by the time right? He's done. Yeah, sure. no Freaking. joke. Freaking unbelievable not to go back on the snyder cut like because we can go on a tangent for that ever but man how awesome would it have been to see him as a thomas wayne batman in the future yes dude yes then it's still he still wants to do it he just recently said he still is hoping to do it and it's possible i saw i saw but we'll see Anyway, seeing him in Boys Season 3 would be fantastic. Is there any uh, info on who he might be playing? No. no, Okay. Very, very vague. It's just this. There's a, it's one of those smoke is their fire situations. (laughs) Uh, I see. But uh, I would love to see him join that cast because he's got, you know, if you're a Walking Dead fan, you know, he's been playing Negan now for goodness. I don't know how many years, how many seasons. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Quite a few now. But, uh, you know, The Walking Dead, it kind of like, for me, has run its course. Is The Walking Dead dead? <laughs> <laughs> but he's he has, there's been times where the way he portrays the character kind of wears on me a tiny bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but he still has, is, is one of the most compelling characters on the show. Wait, are you still watching The Walking Dead? Okay, let's, let's, let's lay this you out. You are? No. No. No, listen. You, you listen. are you are the reason this show is still going. <laughs> no. My <laughs> wife. See, my wife has this thing. When she starts something, and I love her for it. Blame it on the wife because really she's not trait. here to defend herself. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, she has this thing where when she starts something, I don't care what it is, she has to finish it. And that applies to television series and films. So if she starts a movie, I don't care how terrible this movie is. If she starts a series, I don't care how bad the series is. She will watch it all the way to the end. Oh man. And there are times that that is excruciatingly painful to get through because you know, she'll what watch it in our What season are room. they on? I don't even know what season they're on anymore. It feels like 23. 
Man. But I think I think it's legitimately like 11 or 12. That's insane. I think I fell off season 6, season 5, season 6. Jeez. No, now now I now I need to know because uh <laughs> Google. What season? <laughs> uh, okay, it's it's. I think it's okay. It's season ten. It's season ten. So I was one off. Season that's 10. still pretty dang crazy. That's a lot, man. That's, that's a lot. That's, because that's, you could argue that they could have wrapped it up at season five. One hundred percent. Are they are they like in competition with Friends? Like they want to get ten seasons <laughs> like Friends? <laughs> yeah, they keep, they keep this up. It's going to be Cheers. Jeez. What, what's also nuts though is we're saying you know uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan may be coming uh, on to season three of The Boys, but what's nuts? Is we're getting a season three of the boys. Like it's confirmed that we're yeah. getting a season three of the boys before season two is even out. So that is how confident they are that this season's gonna do just as good as the first one. They legitimately greenlit season three, I believe, when they uh were promoting when they were doing the uh the press junket. That's awesome. For, for season two, they greenlit season three. I wonder if this is their most successful show. It's definitely gotta be one of them. For sure. It's up there. It, it It is definitely up there with one of the most successful shows that Amazon has ever put out. Yeah, that's because Amazon also has the Marvelous Myths Maisel as well, right? Is that one? Yeah. Okay. Is that show? Yeah, they also have the too. Jack Ryan series. Right. Oh, so they have a like few that. very popular shows. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got the Lord of the Rings series, of course, coming at some point. That is going to be your well. end all be all, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you. I'm going to, it's going to be like a 12 year old boy when they're, you know, when the new uh, superhero or nerd movie comes out, you know, just sitting there with like a, an, an entire vat of popcorn, just waiting for it to go live. It's going to be 1985 and you're going to, it's Christmas morning and you just got a G1 <laughs> Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Solid reference, bro. Well, staying on TV. Uh, the, they released the the Emmy Emmy nomination. We got some Emmy today. noms, some Emmy yeah. noms. Did you see Nom-noms. this crap? I did. I did. Well, I saw one of them that that uh, you put here on on the doc. But uh, I, the other one is very. One is like, yeah, obviously, and then the other one's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Fair. But the, even the Mandalorian. Okay. So let's just we'll say what we're doing. The Mandalorian was nominated for 15 Emmys. It's crazy. I bet you visual Emmys. effects is one of them, isn't it? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. okay. Best, Probably best leading leading actor as well. Yeah, so I mean, it, like if, to go down the list, uh, they got production design, mm-hmm. cinematography, uh, sci-fi, uh, fantasy sci-fi costumes. Uh, they got sound editing. They got uh, VFX stunt coordination for a drama series. Mm, that's going. Um, and of course, they got uh, um, outstanding new uh, series. Oh, that's for sure. I feel like that definitely deserves the win for outstanding new series for sure. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And and you know what? For me, I'm like give 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 them all of them. Just Dude. give them all of them. Filoni, but take home the win. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm really really happy for that team because it really is a fun series uh, that's done with uh, just a lot of love. And every single person that works on this show, you can tell is a fan from the second you start watching it. Uh, So I'm just thrilled for everybody involved. uh, And I I hope it wins as many as possible. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was easily, it might be my favorite series of, it was 2019, right? Yeah, 2019. It might be my favorite series of 2019. Like, I can't think, I mean, I love the boys and stuff like that, but I mean, the you know, Star Wars, it was, I'm currently wearing a Mandalorian shirt, which is actually funny. <laughs> uh, you know, we got the child or baby Yoda. I think, yeah, I think it's got to be the Mandalorian as far as new series. I think it would be Mandalorian for me. And then second would be um, the boys as far as new series uh, go for last year. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I would agree a hundred percent. The Mandalorian for me was uh, my number one show of 2019. So good. A new, a new, new show, especially. I love the um, theme song. I mean, I ordered, I got the, I got the child from Sideshow coming. Did I tell you that? You did. When is that release? Well, I saw it. You have it? It's here? No, 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 no. I I bought it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, It's not released yet. It comes out, I think it's, I think September, October they're releasing. Did you see um, the Sideshow Con this past weekend during Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con? I did. So it's like, it feels, it feels like everyone did their own little con since like it was all virtual. So it's like, why not just do, (laughs) do it themselves? Uh, But they had a whole uh, display there for people, you know, they invited some press and stuff uh, to go there if they wanted to check out their new statues and one six scale figures and yada, yada, yada. And they had the Yoda, the baby Yoda there. That thing mm-hmm. looks incredible. Not only that, I know you already know this, but for the people listening, 
Sideshow literally went to the visual uh, effects team and the production designers who made the Baby Yoda for the freaking series, got the schematics and blueprints and all the measurements, and basically just made their own. So this one is probably as close as you're going to get to the real thing. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> I'm Everything that you just said is 100% accurate, and I cannot wait. To Are, get that thing. You're going to sleep. Let me tell you something. When, when I we get it, it's going to be making an appearance on the show. Just know that, everyone. It's going to be making an appearance. The child is going to be making an appearance you know on what variant, we need to do? and variant the podcast. We need to get a company one or a show one that we put on our uh, podcast set whenever we get back to doing that. And I think we could swap that out. I love Stan Lee, but I think that is a worthy swap out for a new uh, podcast question. set. So maybe maybe we could put on the company card. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. Okay, there's budgets around here. <laughs> hey, Yoda is priority. <laughs> well, at the bare minimum, you know, I can bring my mascot with me from time to time. <laughs> Your mascot? Initially. You're totally just going to bring you're going to bring him with you to the grocery store, buckle him in yeah, the seatbelt. I'm just going to carry him around like he's a real kid. You're going to get a car seat for him. <laughs> <laughs> have one of those little buggies yeah. those strollers <laughs> well funny. in addition to mandalorian uh star wars rebels also got nominated for four uh, uh emmys did you see that uh the the what the what did star wars rebels no i didn't see that one no i didn't yeah star wars rebels did i was a little bit surprised that uh the clone wars didn't yeah you know that make that yeah but was it was clone wars 2020 though or is it 2019 uh well it didn't it drop in november and it finished out at the beginning of 2020 i don't or was no it wasn't this year i don't i don't remember you know what now i don't even remember you might be right it might be because it's 2020 yeah i think i think it was the beginning of 2020 all of everything that's going on just has time like as a blur it's like we said at the very beginning of this podcast i feel like i'm living one long day so it's really yes. hard to keep my ducks in yes, a row no doubt. <laughs> well rebels anyway got nominated for four so they got they got nods for um sound editing children's program you Music, composition, and uh, a half-hour drama comedy okay. uh, for animation. So they they also got numbers. So Star Wars was uh, for Disney Plus. Star Wars was pretty big at the Emmys. Yeah, that's pretty. I mean, it's not shocking. They've been pumping out some nah. like awesome, especially their animation, the Rebels and Clone Wars. Yeah. That has been some of the best new Star Wars content for literally like the last several years. Without you a know doubt, what I mean, Filoni's been spearheading that, and as we know, he is literally like the human encyclopedia and dictionary for all things <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> and they'll be back because they they shot. Uh, they shot season two for the Mandalorian before all of the COVID that's shutdowns. True. That so that, true. that'll be, that's actually coming this fall on yeah. Disney plus. So we'll be getting that before the year's out too. And Rosario Dawson is supposed to make her first appearance as Ahsoka Tano. I am so, do they haven't released any images or anything. I'm so I excited. Know. She is awesome. Dude, she is awesome. No doubt. I, I, I am very much. We'll definitely be covering every that. single one of those episodes on the podcast, just like we did for the first season of Mandalorian, <laughs> because we love it. <laughs> yeah, because we can't help but talk about right. it. Right. But I think this the final thing we have to talk about today is very, very fitting, because right when all this madness started at the beginning uh, of the year with, you know, the pandemic, we got a series called tiger king and we kind of made it a, a mini tradition on the podcast i think there was like four episodes in a row where we ended yeah, every podcast weeks. talking about tiger king so we we got to bring that back and i guess we can today because the tiger king is also having emmy nominations six to be exact which is <laughs> hilarious this freaking show it's the best worst show i've ever seen <laughs> it, it really is like i've said it before you literally feel worse you feel like you have committed some sort of a, of a crime. I just <laughs> you've done like you've done something wrong, but it's it feels so right at the same time. You know, you nailed it because it, it, I but I just can't believe like if you haven't seen this show, it is one of those shows where everything in it is one hundred percent real. Like yeah, and it is so shocking. Like these are real people. Like they really act like this. The events really happened, and it's not just like one or two characters. It's everyone on the, on this documentary. Like everyone is like like a cartoon character. Like this isn't this isn't real. <laughs> so <laughs> it is so crazy. There was literally times where I like had that moment where I'm putting the, my hands 
on top of my head, like that guy who was depressed when Undertaker <laughs> yes. lost his streak at WrestleMania. I was like, what is happening to to me right now? Like, what is this? That is not real. And I'm like, I'm watching because me and my wife would watch it late at night. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing, right? She's like, yeah, that happened. I'm like, okay. I just needed to know that, that we watched the yeah. same thing. <laughs> That's real life. That happened Jeez. in real life. Well, the part of it that that just made me like, Every single time it was going on, the thing, the part of the show that just every time just made me feel like I was, I had left my body and I had gone to some other dimension was when they would show his music videos mm. and, and they would, they would play like the clips of his and what like they would, they were all some kind of weird backhand at the, uh, the Carol person. Right. It was the weirdest. Yeah. Just. Just I, I, the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I think those videos are still on YouTube. I don't think they got pulled down. I don't think he, he took them no. down. No. So yeah, you could just that's you could just go and watch them. Like he was like he yeah. tried to be like a country singer with tigers and holding a gun and I I, I don't even know. <laughs> it's it is so like I can't even explain it, man. It is so bizarre. <laughs> Dude, seriously, the the rivalry thing between Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin oh is gosh. honestly one of the weirdest things that have hit the mainstream. Hey, all you cool it, cats and kittens out there. Oh my God, it's so freaking weird. <laughs> if Did you, know, you, you see know. just recently that her and her husband, that they're, they had a video that went viral because they were singing 50 Cent's um, no. birthday song? No. Oh I swear. my gosh. Uh, dude. Go shorty, it's your birthday. The whole thing. I'm not gonna sing it. So Isn't her her, her first husband? She fed to a, a, an alligator or a crocodile. Yeah, that's the one that she fell to <laughs> yeah. a lion. Oh, it was a lion, <laughs> or a tiger. Or it was a lion. Oh, no, it was a tiger. It was a tiger. A tiger? I thought it was. Uh, yeah. No, I'm mixing it up because she apparently, or no, Joe apparently, uh, burnt down his own alligator. Yes sanctuary thing but that's a spoiler i yeah. guess but who cares yeah. <laughs> it's been out a while yeah it's been out a while. but dude yeah if you're if you haven't seen tiger king and you're looking for just a bizarre but unbelievably compelling uh docuseries uh you have got to check out some tiger king it you is you gotta I don't know anybody that hasn't seen it at this point though it is true because it was it literally it was one of those series that like kind of like uh, when Stranger Things first came out, it was one of those series no one knew about, but it just hit like fire and yes. everyone was talking about it. Now, this wasn't for the same reason <laughs> Stranger Things got no. popular, but nonetheless, <laughs> not at all. But nonetheless, it got very popular. I will say it did hit, it did hit at perfect time too, because it hit just yes, as the all the shutdown yes. started. Yeah. Yeah. And so everybody was just freshly trapped in their house, and that's when it took off like a rocket ship. Like, say what you will about the show. It, it, that's why I say because it's the best, like, worst show, because I was genuinely excited every night once, you know, I put the kid to bed, me and my wife, we'd like get popcorn, get snacks, we'd be like, Tiger King, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Let's roll. (laughs) (laughs) But but here's what's hilarious about it getting nominated for the, for the Emmys too, is that it's nominated. One of its, one of the nominations of its six is outstanding documentary or nonfiction series. And it's going up against like the last dance, That is insane. which is legitimately the best sports documentary I've ever seen in my life. It's not going to win, but it's funny to be, it got nominated. <laughs> Dude, who? Uh, yeah. I would have to imagine that the last dance is going to win. Right. And at least in that nomination, but it's also nominated for, didn't they put uh, the last directing? dance up on Netflix recently? Did, did it, yes, they did. Okay. I got to watch that. I yep. got to watch that. It just went up. Dude, you you'll love it. It is so good. Well, MJ uh, is like were, my era, so like that's you know like mm-hmm. the ni- or like the '90s and stuff like that. So I definitely gotta gotta watch that. It was all about it 23 is. and the Bulls when I was growing up. So that's right. <laughs> I think it was for all of us kids yeah. at that during that time. It was about Jordan. Yep. Uh, but it, but the, it's so good. So I can't imagine it winning. You know, uh, beating the Last Dance. Uh, but it's you know it's also nominated for directing for a documentary, uh, uh, editing and music, and you know of course. He, he should win just for his songs alone. Freaking Joey. His, <laughs> his, his, his serenades to Carol Baskin. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I wonder Incredible. If, I wonder if that comic book we talked about, because for those of you who don't know, we said this on the podcast m- many moons ago that he's getting a comic book mm-hmm. series. I don't know if that's out yet. Obviously, it's not something I'm, I'm keeping up to date with, but I'm very curious to see uh, if <laughs> the comic book has landed. <laughs> I, think, I think it did come out. Oh, man. Maybe that deserves a review. <laughs> Could you imagine? So like, today on Variant, we're talking about Joe Exotic. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. It the it, it's called the infamous Tiger King. Golly. Golly. And it and it sure it sure did. It did uh at least at least the sneak peeks uh are, are out. Well guys, watch you can out for it. Take a look. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's hot on the wire. <laughs> Forget Marvel's Empire and Joker War. It's all about Joe Exotic. <laughs> But I think that's a fitting way to wrap up our day. I think it is. We 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 have laughed. We <laughs> we've cried. <laughs> oh, how fitting for the times. <laughs> but with all that said, guys, we'll talk to you next time when we talk about all things comics. 